Hey guys and welcome to Scuba Travel and Adventure. My name is Thomas and today in the video I will be doing some basic maintenance on my Africa Twin. I will be replacing the coolant. So the reason why I'm doing that, I see too many of you having issues with the water pumps and stuff like that. Uh, I guess we are overlooking to check uh, some essential uh, items on, uh, on a bike and uh, I figure I'm going uh, close on uh, three years uh, with my Africa Twin and it will be good time for me to do that since I'm sitting at home for a little bit now. Uh, I had to take some time off work so I'll jump on it and I'll do some basic maintenance. In this video basically I will check the breather nipple on, uh, on the coolant uh, on the right hand side of the motor and then I will drain and refill the coolant. I will show you how I will proceed, make sure I have another uh, few years before I have to do some major maintenance on uh, like replacing the water pump or any sort of thing like that. Start by taking off the fairings and uh, getting into my radiator. I was planning to do a little bit more uh, for valve adjustment but uh, I think that will be too long of the video and I don't want to go through that. Uh, it's too much stuff for one man to move the camera and do all the work. And I will start by taking off the crash bars and uh, the fairings and getting into the radiators. And after that, uh, I will do the brake fluid change. So I also bought new diaphragms um, for the, or caps, however you want to call it, uh, for the uh, for the reservoirs uh, front, front and back because it's advised uh, that you replace those every time you change the brake fluid. I'm gonna have to start uh, with removing my skid plate and then uh, have to loosen up the crash bars uh, so because with those heat bars you don't have too much room to remove the fairings. Uh, that's a little bit pain in the ass uh, but it is what it is. Every time you have to do any work on a bike, uh, the crash bars either have to come off or at least uh, you have to pull them aside so you have enough room to remove the side panels on, uh, or the fairings on, uh, on your motorcycle. So I'll start with the removing of the skid plate. I'm using a heat skid plate as well. So it's the same uh, as, as my crash bars. There is not much of a uh, choice uh, when you are using the uh, heat crash bars. So the heat skid plates got uh, three screws basically that are holding it in place. I removed the front bolt in the center that's holding the nose and now I'm just gonna remove the whatever I can here and loosen up here by the engine so they go so a little bit towards the side. Now I'm gonna have to loosen up those bolts that are holding the uh, crash bars uh, onto the frame. All right, so I got my crash bars off on one side, and the other one is the other side is just loosened up. And uh, now I'll start uh, taking off the fairings to get into the radiators. So I'll start by taking off my air dam or wind deflector, however you guys want to call that. And that is off. So now it's the fun part uh, to remove all the clips that are located uh, and holding the fairing and uh, pull it away. So there's four of them here, two in the front and, uh, sorry, one in the front here on the right hand side, one on the left side under your accessory power and uh, two on the sides here closer to your tank. And then you got a few more down in the front. I'm not gonna go over that uh, because there's videos made uh, how to take that stuff apart. On different channels, uh, there's a lot of, of video how to take the fairings off the Africa Twin which probably most of you guys know anyway. Just in case uh, 
Some of you are new to that, so you gotta make sure you press that center uh, inside and then pull out uh, the pin with the pick. It's pretty straightforward. So there's like a one, two, three on each side. Then you have two on the top. And then there's also two screws that are holding the fairing here. Just so you know, just in case if you want to take it off and you haven't seen other videos. And hopefully now I should be able to pull that off. So there's a couple uh, grommets here that are holding the fairing in. Just pull on those gently and that, that should come off. Be careful, you don't want to break nothing. I wish that design was a little bit different. I'm not a fan of that design on the Africa Twin. I wish there was a better way to take them off. Just wiggle the plastic and it should come off. Oh, forgot the top ones. Huh. There's uh, two more here on top. Uh, yeah, I can't forget about those guys. And it comes off. And the same thing goes on the other side. So what I'll do now, I'll start the bike and uh, let, uh, I'll warm up the coolant. Uh, not too hot, I don't wanna make it hot, but uh, just at least so it's warm. So to drain the coolant, uh, first you have to remove the radiator cap and then there's your drain bolt right here that's uh, right, right in between the two uh, screws that are holding the, case, the engine case. So that one has to be removed and you drain your coolant this way. And uh, just on the other side of that, there's a little nipple. Um, uh, that's the breather nipple that makes sure that it's nice and clean always that there's no debris in behind that So because if you're when you're off-roading sometimes you can have it plugged uh, with the mud especially when you have the uh, Lower skid plate, so we'll remove that Open it slowly because otherwise it's gonna shoot uh, all over uh, the place. There's a crash washer, so copper washer, so technically that should be replaced, but uh, mine doesn't look too bad, so I'm just gonna clean it and uh, reinstall it. So I'm just gonna let it drain the, the last little bits and I'll get back to refilling it. But uh, probably I'm gonna just remove the, the filling cup on a reservoir as well. So what I'll do, I'll suck out the, the remaining stuff from the reservoir. because the manual tells you to actually remove that and flush it with water. And uh, I don't think I wanna do that because in order to remove it, you have to remove the whole shock. And uh, I think that's quite ridiculous. Some Honda designs uh, are pretty funny. I don't think when you take it to the dealer, they will actually remove that when, you do, when they're doing a flash. Uh, otherwise, uh, I think that will cost you a fortune. I'm gonna clean out the washers i'll probably flip it just on the other side this way it's gonna seal it better this way well, anyways she's dry now so now it's gonna be time to just uh, refill the stuff but uh, before i do that i'll put this bolt back in here and uh, keep in mind that the actual torque spec on this thing is uh, 13 uh, foot pound of torque i don't have such a small torque range so I will just go by hand. So the Africa Twin takes uh, 1.63 liters 
of uh, coolant and uh, I will be using HP coolant uh, purchased at my local Honda dealer, uh, which is Rocky Mountain Power Sports in Calgary. Uh, they always taking good care of me. Might as well put the stuff that they're using because uh, the price is uh, not, uh, not expensive. And I, whenever I can, I always prefer to use the OEM uh, or Honda recommended stuff. So that's the coolant I'll be using and uh, it's a 50, uh, 50 blend uh, ready to use. You don't have to do nothing, just pour it in. So I got two bottles of that stuff. I pour it slowly. I just gotta make a correction. The torque on this uh, drain bolt is uh, actually not uh, 13 foot pounds it's uh, 13 uh, newton uh, newton meters but it's a uh, 10 uh, foot pounds so just to make that clear and uh, i just filled up uh, the radiator uh, to the maximum and now uh, the manual says that uh, you should be uh, running uh, the motorcycle in uh, in the neutral uh, for three to four minutes and then top it up and make sure that the reservoir is filled up to its marking levels. So I will do that right now. I will start the bike and at the same time that will uh, remove all the air from the system because we have to breathe the air from the system this way uh, it, uh, it's done the way it should be. I will check for leaks if I don't have any leaks at the same time. Make sure it's all nice and dry. I will top up now. And I will look in my reservoir. I will have to put some more in there as well. So the reservoir has to be filled up to the upper uh, level mark. Uh, there's an actual mark uh, right on the reservoir that uh, gives you the indication. And you gotta make sure the bike is level. So that's why I have it uh, wedged in the front tire and the back tire. And the last step would be closing everything up. Uh, your cup on the reservoir, the radiator cup. Okay, she's nice and tight. There's actually a stop mark right there. So how far you can uh, turn this thing. Let's start her up one more time. So this is the simple procedure that uh, anybody can do and uh, flush the cooling system. And now uh, the bike is ready again for a new season. And uh, if you find that video helpful, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe uh, to my channel, that always helps me the most. Check out my other tutorial on the channel as well, that I have uh, how-to videos, how to do a couple other things, and uh, browse through my adventures. And uh, in the next video, I will show you how to breed the brake system. Thank you for watching and uh, till next time, cheers.